The Dutch cycle a lot, and why wouldn't they, on such beautiful and safe cycle tracks? But how did they get their cycling infrastructure? Why and when? The very first Dutch cycle path was opened in 1885 in Utrecht, but it was really a racetrack for competition on high wheelers, men like this. There's no real connection to the present day cycling infrastructure. Cycling had long been for the elite in the Netherlands. It was only after the safety bicycle was invented and became affordable for the masses that cycling really took off, from about the 1920s. Many of these bicycles were Dutch made. By then, most cities had several bicycle manufacturers. Bicycles became so affordable that even children began to cycle. But the streets in the cities were not redesigned, there was no need for it at that time. That was different in the countryside. Because of the higher speeds of motor traffic there, it had been standard practice to have cycleways next to highways since the early 1930s, some of which still exist. After World War II, the bicycle was the most affordable and most used means of transportation. It would take until the 1960s before cars came into reach of most of the population. And when they did, they changed everything. Planners thought they had to redesign all public spaces to make way for the car. Bicycles were seen as old-fashioned, things of the past that would vanish soon enough. They didn't, and cars required more space than there was available. Towns and cities were not made to accommodate all that traffic, and there was another high price to pay. With cars taking over the public realm, the streets became very dangerous. By 1972, the worst year in history for traffic deaths. Nine people were killed every day in traffic in the Netherlands. People started protesting against tearing down buildings for roads in the city. In Amsterdam, the road plans were stopped in a very tight vote in the city council. Utrecht did build a road, partly, but because it was never finished, it didn't serve a real purpose. To make traffic safer, speed limits were introduced as were drink driving laws and seat belts. People at the time did not think it was necessary, but the figures proved otherwise. The death toll dropped considerably, but not really for cycling. All over the country, people joined forces to demand better cycling policies. A journalist, who lost one of his three children in traffic, while another was injured, got a group of parents together. Their slogan, Stop the Child Murder, was bold but it resonated, not only in society, but also with decision makers, especially those who had been affected themselves. The Minister of Transport had lost a son in traffic. He was willing to experiment to improve cycling safety. In the late 1970s, the first cycle routes were tried out in Tilburg and The Hague, a mid-sized town and a large city. While criticized for being too elaborate, too expensive, and too disruptive, they did start a change. A third project in Delft proved that one route in a city is not enough. You need a cycling network. Smaller interventions like allowing two-way cycling in a one-way street, bus stop bypasses, shortcuts through a park, small bridges and traffic lights adjusted for cycling were more cost-effective to improve cycling levels and cycling safety. Further experiments changed Dutch street design. Speed bumps slowed down cars. Home zones, called Woonerf in Dutch, became places where cars had to share the road with people, even children playing. City centers were close to car traffic and thrived. Not everything worked right away. The first cycle street was too far ahead of its time. Drivers weren't willing to give up their privileges just yet. Zones with a speed limit of 30 km per hour were effective, at least if you didn't just put up a sign, but really changed the street to reflect that lower speed. Slowly, the Netherlands developed a system of different types of infrastructure for different locations and functions. There are roads for moving traffic, there is place to live your lives, and there are roads connecting the two, each with their own type of infrastructure optimized for their function. After redesigning almost every single street in the last 30 years, it is now often instantly clear 
what a space is for. Fun fact, the type of cycling infrastructure that was considered too fancy in the experiments in Tilburg and The Hague has now become standard all over the country. Cycling has become a viable alternative to the car, especially when combined with the train for longer distances. Bicycle parking at Dutch train stations is spectacular. But the developments don't stop. Separating cycling from motor traffic now happens on route level. While through motor traffic goes around residential areas, the cycle routes go right through them. And some streets that were once main car routes have evolved. A cycleway got the cycling volumes up to the point that it became too narrow. Now the entire street has become a cycling street where cars are guessed. At places where there is more cycling than motor traffic, cycle tracks are beginning to be removed. Thanks to fewer car movements, that is possible. On average, the Netherlands does not own fewer cars than people in the neighboring countries. But the Dutch do use them for different journeys and on different locations. Wherever possible, the more car-centric past is erased, so that the Dutch can cycle on and cities can look and feel even better in the future. Creating cycle tracks is not a goal. Creating an attractive and safe living space is.